going on guys in this video we're going to put together a quick photo with some text that we're going to show and hide behind the item okay so the first thing we are going to do is grab a background image so we're going to come over to our stock section on the right hand side if you guys aren't seeing the stock section head up to your view menu down to studio and just ensure you got it checked and once we're here guys for those of you who don't know Inside this stock section, we've got access to three different websites, which all feature thousands of images, which have been uploaded by people all around the world that are free to use. All you have to do is just give written credit to any of the images that you use, the author's name, and I'll show you how you'll find that in just a moment. So first of all, we're just going to find an image. For this one, I'm gonna look for something water-based and just find something you're happy with. For me, that one there will do. I'm just going to drag this over. And once you drop this, guys, you'll notice that you get the name right up here. I mean, this one just says by Pexels anyway, so this could be by anybody. But if you used to drag in a different image, for instance, we'll just do that one quickly. You can see that's obviously somebody else that's created this one. So just take note of that name and just drop that down wherever you plan on publishing your image. And it's going to undo that. And what I want to do now is just zoom out on this with command minus and resize that image because it's too big. So you just drag that down to fit your canvas size and move it into place. So that's fine for me. Command plus to zoom back in. Or if you hit command zero, that will fit to your screen. Okay, so the idea that I'm going to do here is I'm going to write water and I'm going to put that over the image, but I'm going to have some of the water over here visible, but it's going to disappear as it goes behind it and visible once it gets over here again and hopefully be able to see some of the text through the water itself so let's get started with that so we're going to come over to our layers and we're going to grab our text tool and we're just going to write out water i'm going to put this in capitals and get your arrow tool and position this where you want it you can make this text bigger if you want or smaller it's entirely up to you maybe for me i'm going to go a little bit bigger and i'm just going to keep it about there, I think that's fine for now. And I'm just gonna zoom out a bit because I am on a 27 inch IMAX and my screen's pretty big in front of me. Okay, so like I said, the idea now is to have this middle section disappear and go behind the glass. So in order to do that, we need to put a mask on this water text. And to do that, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna choose a mask, the rectangle with a circle in the middle and just hit that. And you gotta click on your mask itself. So for those of you who don't know what a mask is, basically it's a way of hiding or revealing what's underneath the current layer. So if I now click on this mask like we just done and I'll come over and grab my paintbrush tool and I start to paint away now, as you can see, it's revealing what's underneath it. So I can just get rid of that for the moment. And what's important to note here, guys, is that you have two colors that you use with masking. One is black and the other one is white. So black will make things disappear to reveal what's underneath it. And if you change that to white, it will bring it back if you made some mistakes. So that's all you need to remember. Okay, so let's get started with this now. So I'm going to go back to black because we're going to start erasing some of this. And we're going to come up to our brush settings at the top. For this, I'm going to keep the opacity at 100. I'm going to keep the flow at 100 and the hardness at 100. Because we've got really sharp edges here, it's going to work in our favor. So we're just going to zoom in now with command plus and command minus to zoom out again. And we're just going to start erasing what we don't need. So we're going to get rid of this T and we're going to get rid of part of this A. Don't come too close to the edge yet. Let's just get rid of all the excess that we don't need. And all the way over here as well. Not too close to the edge at the moment. We'll zoom in and work on that in just a moment. And that'll do for the minute. So we're going to zoom in even further now. And we'll just come over here. So if you guys notice, when you look at your circle here and you pull over, you can see the edge of the glass right there. If you come over too far, you can start seeing the blue underneath it. So the trick here is just to keep that circle where we can just see the line underneath it and not going into that there. And that is going to be the easiest way of masking this nicely. So if we say around there and drop that down and try and keep that lined up, there and there and then that should be a good mask on that side and we've got to do the same just up here 
is try and keep that line of the glass itself. That one went slightly out, so I'm going to quickly redo that one. And this can get tedious, but if you guys want a good effect, then this is unnecessary, unfortunately. And if we zoom out now, we can see that generally looks good on the A. So I'm quite happy with that. And then we've just got to come over and do the same thing over this side. And the further you zoom in, the better it's going to be on your circle. We're seeing what's behind it. So once again, we're going to find our edge of our glass, which is around here. I'm going to get that one. And again, there, there, and there. And that should be fine for that part. And then we're going to come down and do the same on both of these. So about there. Slightly spilled over a little bit. You're not going to notice it, but I like to be precise. So that one, I think. And that will do for now. That might not necessarily be the line, but I think it could be. But I'm going to leave it now rather than taking up too much of your time. So we're going to come down here and we'll do the same here. And just roughly find that line. And it starts to bend a little bit down the bottom, so it could come a little bit trickier. But we're just going to go for that and see how it looks anyway. So you can go in and get a little bit more precise if you want to. I think that might have slightly come away a little bit at the bottom, but you can go in and fix that yourself if you've got more time. So that is that part done, which is pretty simple as you can see. So what I want to do now is I want to make a copy of the water text. on C to copy and Command V to paste. And we don't need the mask on this one, so we're just going to click on that and delete it. So at the moment, you can see we've got all the text there again. And I'm just going to zoom that so you guys can see it. And if we turn that off, it's just as we had it a moment ago. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to put a blend mode on this to make it blend into the water behind it. So to do that, we're going to come up to here where it says normal. And we've just got to find something that will blend it nicely. So usually it'll be either soft light or overlay, which give you the best effect. Sometimes screen will do the job. So we're going to try them once first. We're going to go to overlay. That's not bad at all. Soft light isn't really working on that because we're losing them colors. So we could go with overlay and just drop that opacity a little bit. Just to blend that a little bit more. I'm going to keep that about 70 at the moment because what I want to do now as well is I want to give this effect of a blur. So we'll go on to our effects. We're going to go to the Gaussian Blur, Gaussian Blur, however you want to pronounce that. And we're just going to bring that up a little bit just to blur out that text. And I think three pixels is probably fine. You guys can do whatever you want with that to make it look better. And as you can see, that already looks pretty good. So what you can notice straight away is now we've got this blur on this other text behind it. And we really do not want that because it ruins a picture. So we're going to get rid of that by putting a mask on this text as well. Even though we just deleted it, it's because it removed half of what we had in here, which isn't the idea. So we've got to create a new mask on this one. So let's just create another mask. Click on that one. Ensure we are on black to start erasing. Let's make our brush bigger. And all we've got to do now is just start erasing away from this text to get rid of that blur underneath it. And we'll get closer over here in a minute once we get rid of that blur there. And then we'll just zoom in and bring our brush size down and we'll just try and take away that blur on this edge. It doesn't really matter if you go over on this because you're not going to notice it anyway. So it is fine to do that and we'll just do the same over here. Make sure there's just no blur on any of that text. So it only affects what's behind it. And I'm just zoom back out. So straight away, you can see that is a pretty cool effect right there. And you can go that one step further if you want, because these lines are quite straight. So if you want to make that a little bit more believable, we can come up to our layer section up here, go down to new live filter layer, and we can just give that a distort. And we can just kind of 
give it maybe a ripple effect just to make it look like it's just not so straight to even this is up to you how far you want to go with this I think that looks fine and we could get away with that so we're just going to leave it so that's partly that done now and what I want to do next is we could probably give this text a gradient so if we come over to the fill tool and it's going to drag from the top to the bottom like that and you guys can choose whatever colors you want I think I'm going to try and keep that blue that we've already got just to keep the picture consistent with each other so I'm going to come up here I'm just going to sample I'll just sample that blue there and we'll have that at the bottom and keep the white at the top maybe go a little bit darker on the bottom to be fair yeah i kind of like it like that and if you want to bring it down just drag that middle section or if you want to bring it up to start the fade at a different point but for me that is okay at the moment and what we need to do now is just create a shadow for this so we're just gonna once again make a copy of this water layer here and paste it and we can get rid of that mask again and this one, what we're going to do is going to start to drag it down to sit underneath the one that is already on. And we're going to flip it around. So to do this, we're just going to right click on it, go down to transform and flip vertically, just like that. And we're going to give that now a color of black. And we're going to drop that opacity a little bit to around 60 for now, but we'll probably change it in a minute. And what we want to do now is we want to come down to our mesh tool right over here on the left hand side and you won't have perspective on here you probably have mesh so just find that one and just change that to perspective. So what we want to do now is just kind of figure out a perspective of where the shadow would lie. This is down to your personal preference how you do this. For me I'm going to bring up this section I think and maybe bring it out just slightly and I'm going to do the same over here. Just make it slightly go to the left and the right. And if you want, you can bring it up to make the shadow smaller. It's just trial and error and just playing around with this guy so you get some of that you like. So I think something like that will work fine. And I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. And with the shadow, I want it to start off harsh at the bottom of here and blend out as it comes up here. So to do that, we're going to grab our mask again on that layer. So we're going to go and find that one, which is our shadow. We can just name that. And we're going to put a mask on that one. And this time round, we are just going to get our fill tool over here. And our colors on this fill tool are going to have to be black and white. It's just so it fades out. And we'll keep that around there like that. See, we've got white at the top, which is revealing it. And we've got black at the bottom, which is hiding it. So this effect will only work on a mask. So do remember that. Okay, so that isn't looking too bad at all. Now we've obviously got this inside of here. So we do have to erase that. If you want to keep it there, you can. It's entirely up to you. But for me, I'm going to get rid of that. So once again, we're going to come back on our mask. And we just choose our black, get our paintbrush. And then we can just start removing that from inside of the glass. And I'm not going to get too precise here, guys, because we're basically at the end. So I just want to quickly get rid of it to show you how it works. So I don't know about you guys, but I think that is a really cool effect. It's very easy to do. And all you guys can do this from the start of using Affinity. It's very straightforward. This is something that you will use all the time, this technique, when it comes to photo manipulation. So starting off with something simple like this will lead you on to better things. So you can get a lot more technical with this if you want to. You can have 3D text. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to take any more of your time. But we can also come back in here and start to shape the text around the shapes that you see inside here. So if you want to quickly zoom in, I'll just demonstrate that. And we just click on our water mask. And you can just generally start just deleting it if you want across all the shapes you can see. So it just looks like a little bit more authentic. But these are things that take a bit more time, so you are welcome to do that if you want to. 
And if we just zoom back out, you can just see it looks better straight away. So there you go, guys. I really hope you found this useful and you can make use of what you learned here. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.